say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Hello everyone and welcome to a new direction. My name is Jay Izzo and wow, do we have a great show for you today. I am telling you what this is absolutely a fundamental practical, applicable show for you right now, wherever you live in this great world where you are, this show is for you. Folks, let's be honest with each other here. Here's the deal. We are living in a world that is very different than the world that we lived in before. Yeah, hello, right? Here's, here's the thing, right? We're all working remotely, right? And not only are we working remotely, we're working probably with the same software. <laughs> it's called Zoom, all right? right? And we're all working with this thing called Zoom. But let's be honest with you. Before this all started, how many of you have been really comfortable with Zoom? Exactly. Not many of you. How many of you are even more comfortable now that you've been in this for a few months? Right. Very few of you. Look, folks, there are so many tricks and tips and professional ways to do this. Folks, I have got the man the man with the book, John Paul Mendoza, and the book is entitled Remote Work, Being Productive for a Better, Remote Work for a Better World, Being Productive, Engaged, and Sane in Today's Turbulent Times. He is going to light up your world when it comes to Zoom. I am, I am so excited because this book is just, it's not a long read, but man, it is just packed full of great information and it's going to make your meetings better it's going to make your webinars better it's going to make your seminars better it's going to make your training better if you're a consultant or a coach he's going to make you better it, i don't care teachers li listen if you're a teacher i just want to tell you we talked about this before the show came on if you're a teacher i don't care college elementary high school whatever it may be you're going to want to listen to this show because I, there is going to be just so many tips and tricks and it's going to be fantastic and John Paul Mendoza is with us, and wow, he is so good, so cool. He's amazing. But before we get to him, let's do what we do every week, right? And here's what we do, right? I talk to you about your training, right? Right. We're in the midst of a pandemic, right? And 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 I talk to you about how are you training right now, right? We all need to be training. And I'm not talking about just physical training. I'm talking about training in the four areas of your life, right? I'm talking, I am talking physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, right? Because here's what we know. Right when things are at their worst, when you're under the gun, when when you are under pressure, when you are under stress, when you are tired, when you are exhausted, when you feel you can't go one more step, the only thing you have to rely on is your training. That's it. Nothing more. Right, because if your training isn't at its peak right now, it's too late to train. So you need to be training now because things are going to get rough. And you go, well, Jay, they're pretty rough already. Another reason to keep your training going. So let's let's just look at these four areas on a scale of one to ten. One being miserable, ten being outstanding. Right? Let's talk about your physical training. And what I mean by your physical training is how are you exercising? How are your how's your diet? How is your sleep? How is the water intake that you're getting? Right? How are you doing training yourself, training your body to be the best that it can be on a scale of one to ten? How would you rate yourself? Right. For many of you, I know you can't go to a gym, right? You know what? I built a gym in my garage, went to Home Depot, came up with cinder blocks and a galvanized piece of pipe. I'm working out. Took my two mile plus walk with a backpack on my back. There's always ways we can train physically, get the exercise in. How committed are you to it? Right. So on a scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 outstanding, five is average. How would you say your training's going? And then you got to ask yourself a question. What are you going to do to change it right now? So you get your training up. All right. So there's your first number. Second number, mentally. What I mean by your mental training, mental training, that's like reading and consuming and being active in your learning. And when I talk about learning, I'm not just talking about, you know, learning new words. I am talking about learning new concepts, new ideas, gaining wisdom, gaining knowledge, gaining understanding in what you do, maybe gaining understanding in your relationships, gaining understanding in, in how you function in what you do. Right. I mean, the, John Paul's going to talk about we're going we're to spend a little time talking about his layer cake, which I just love the layer cake. Right. How well are you able to utilize the tools that you have in front of you? How's that training going? Are you are you practicing using the tools mentally? 
So on a scale of one to 10, one measurable, 10 outstanding, how's your training going mentally? Right? And then there's the emotional training. And emotional training, you know what? We get emotional training every day. I had emotional training today. Right? I'm out walking. I'm out in the road. You know, some car, sometimes cars aren't paying attention when you're out doing your long walks and you're walking up and down hills. And, and sometimes cars just aren't paying attention. I try to be careful. But every now and then that car comes speeding along, not paying attention because they're looking down at their phone. And you know what? There's a part of me that wants to be angry. But that's my part of my emotional training is to control my anger, you know, and say, okay, you know what? You know, I can choose how I feel about this situation. I can either be angry with the guy who's speeding right past me, or I can go, you know what? I'm safe. I'm good. Right. And I, I can move on. I say it all the time, right? You could kick me as hard as you want. I have a lot of choices in how I want to respond. That's all part of your emotional training. And then the other part of your emotional training is how well are you able to tap into the emotional understanding of other people? Right? I mean, I mean, sometimes what happens is we, we, don't, we don't really want to tap in to understand someone else's emotions. We don't want to feel what they're feeling. But being able to identify what they're feeling and identifying with them what they're feeling, that's what we call empathy. So on a scale of one to 10, how are you doing? in your emotional training, right? And what can you do to improve it? And then finally, the fourth area, which is the spiritual area, right? And you know, spiritual area is if you remove the physical, mental, and emotional, and you move all that outside, what do you have left? Right, well, that's spiritual. And some of you are gonna say, I'm really not all that spiritual. Well, th th I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you have any plans for your future, yes or no? And all of you are gonna say, well, yeah, I've got plans for a future. I said, okay, well, that's faith because it hasn't happened yet. You don't know if it's going to happen, but you believe it's going to happen. That's faith. That's spiritual. There's another aspect to the spiritual part, right? It's, it's, the, it's that place that puts you at center, gives you a sense of peace, gives you a sense that, you know, that, that even though the world around you can be crashing, that you have this, you're at center with yourself. How's that working mm -hmm. for you? And that can come in a variety of ways, right? It could be God. It could be meditation. It could be nature, right? And, and I just ask yourself, well, how's it working? Because as, I've often, as I often say on the show, you know what, being spiritual is not going to church and thinking about fishing. Being spiritual is probably going fishing and thinking about God. That's really being spiritual. So you've got these four areas of your life that you've rated on a scale of one to 10. You got to think of those as a leg of a chair. Each leg, right, is important for us to sit. And if they're crooked, what happens, right? Posture's bad. And over time, it really can hurt us. By the same token, if the chair is too low, we can't sit at a normal table and eat the delicious food and things that are in front of us because we're too low. So the whole idea is in your training is to bring your training up in balance. And at the same time, what you want to do is you want to bring it up to the right height so you can get the nourishment that you need. And speaking of someone who's going to nourish you today, his name is John Paul Mendoza. And he has written, by the way, he's written, uh, he's written, couple books. One is called Most Businesses Fail in the First Five Minutes, and it takes three to five years to realize it. By the way, I would, I would highly recommend you check it out. He's also author of the current book that we're going to talk about today, which is entitled Remote Work for a Better World. And he is fantastic. Let me tell you a little bit about him. First of all, he is he, he likes to say this, and I love this. About, instead of going to college, he says, I spent four years in Las Vegas learning how to win and discover how people really are, especially about money. And so for the last 30 plus years, you know what, he's been a salesperson and he's helped CEOs and sales teams win, win deals, close more business. And he specializes in technology companies, but he really helps all sorts of businesses. And he works in areas such as turnaround, sales processes, messaging, strategy, problem solving. And you know what, what he does is he just makes them better. And you know how I feel about those performance enhancers like he does. And he does it differently. And I love Mavericks because you know, that's what I am. And that's what he is he is a maverick so if you're in trouble you need to turn around if you've got if you've got aggressive competitors nipping at your heels maybe you're not no well known and you have a product strategy and you have a problem you know what call him because he's right there and you can learn more about <laughs> Don paul mendocha all over he's all over the internet and he joins us here on a new direction so ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the show and welcome to a new direction john paul mendocha welcome to a new direction brother 
Hey, Jay, thanks for having me on. You you know, it's not, nothing like having a guy who's just got low energy like yourself, you know, just, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got I got wax cleaned out of my ears. It's been there for a while, man. I mean, it's just, boo, done. I'm set. I'm good. I'm going, man. I'm happy. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. You know, you know what's interesting uh, about your book, which, by the way, remote work brilliantly written. And I know that your team, you actually did this remotely through Zoom. And I did. You, you guys kind of put this together. And uh, I loved what you did because as an old Trekkie, and I am an old Trekkie, right? We talk a lot about the time-space continuum. And really, you <laughs> kind of took you kind of took that theme and you took it to another level, right? Right. Yeah, and- I... I- well, and and the, and the, yeah, the, and the thing that really jumped out, and and just just a little bit of how we got to doing this is that I was in the process of taking a book that took me 30 years to really get my act together and write, which was you know most businesses fail in the first five minutes, and uh, you know found the right co-author. So I mean, I, I I now can give all of your listeners the method that got my book written, which is you need 30 years and a Colombian, because my co-author co is <laughs> Colombian. So that, that's all you need, man, and it works. But anyway, we're we're launching the book, Jay. And while we're launching the book, the world is crashing around us, crashing. And I looked at him and, and literally he he had flown in from Texas. We were you know locked in a hotel room working on this launch process. And I said, you know what, we got and we got to go write a different book. And he's like, wait a second, I just spent two and a half years with you writing this book. I don't know if I want to write another book. And uh, we, we went off, we did a podcast with a guy, great. And we left there and I said, we got to write another book. And we pulled together the team and in 17 days, Remote Work for a Better World popped out. Awesome. And it, what it is, is that we took all the right people, all the ideas and said, how do we make this thing work? And how do we make it so the average person can find something? Now there's a lot of different variation in the book as it should be, because everybody's coming at this from their own level. And I have, because of being involved in sales, I have been pitched on every platform you can imagine, you know, WebEx, you know, that was the Jurassic period, you know, I mean, I went to, which was, you know, go to pause, you know, and, and eventually, you know, I, I started using Zoom and I was using Zoom for my own purposes, for my own clients, my own material. And I said, you know, guys, we got to pull this thing together. We got to pull it together fast. And what we did is we literally got on, you know, mega hours of Zoom meetings and hashed this thing out and got it out the door. So we're not we're not just sitting there with, uh, you know, leather patches on our sleeves going, you know, intellectually, what do you think about it? We're like right in the midst of it, you know, from as far away as Peru to the UK to, you know, the wilds of uh, Michigan. Uh, we, we covered it all. <laughs> with John Paul Mendoza, and uh, we're going to be talking about his book, Remote Work for a Better World. So one of the things you say, this is the promise that you make in the introduction of the book. You say, by the end of this book, you will not only be able to understand the power of this tool, Zoom, we're talking about, understand its capabilities and weaknesses, but more importantly, comprehend where it fits logically. This is this That phrase uh, hooked me right away because I think what happens is so many people like you and I, you know, have, you know, when we tried WebEx and go to meeting and all these other things that we tried doing, you know, we, we were trying to sometimes I think force fit it to what we were doing, right. but we're in a, we're in a place right now in this world, wherever everybody is at, where this, this thing called zoom is absolutely paramount to being able to being productive. And I think I think there's some logistics here that uh, we take for granted. We I don't think we understand how the tool works. And you have this really cool graphic called the layer cake, right? Which starts at the very bottom of tools, techniques, tactics, strategy, and goals and logistics. Look, can we can we fit the layer cake? Uh, let's fit the layer cake around Zoom because I think it's really important that we start with the tools of the layer cake and understanding how zoom is a tool, just like so many other things. Can can we, can we start there? Is that a good place to start? You think? Yeah, I I think that's a great place to start. So the, the, the concept of the layer cake is that, you know, people love tools. Humans love tools, actually men. I mean, I, I, I mean, if you're out there and you're a woman and you love tools, okay, I got it. But men love tools. In fact, home Depot and Lowe's figured this out. 
because they always put the tools right up by the cash register. And, and, you know, and, and, and I've spent time observing guys in the Lowe's and, and Home Depot because the guys, when they're by themselves, wander before, you know, they're supposed to be leaving, you know, the wife just said, hey, when are you coming home? And the guy wanders over and he's looking at the power tools. He's looking at this stuff. So <laughs> tools, we love tools. But I can tell you that a lot of people buy tools and never learn how to use them. Zoom is a great tool. However, it, nobody is sitting there telling you this is how you need to use it. How, how does it fit? What are the techniques? Uh, you know, I see, uh, you know, all kinds of people get a link to, to Zoom and they go, well, I got the link, but I couldn't get it figured out. and I couldn't do this, you know, and they have bad lighting. They don't have the right sound. They don't have all of those little elements. Well, Zoom isn't going to tell you you need to do all of that. I mean, I'll, I'll share just a really quick one for everybody. If you have, and, and I don't know if this works on an Android tablet, so I'll, I'll beg off on that. But if you have an iPad, because Apple are such, how do I, I, I know I know we have a nice audience, so pedantic, fancy way of saying such a pain that they force, they force Zoom to be very careful with resources. So check this out. In the middle of a pandemic, I've got to go to this meeting in Vegas. You know, I don't want to fly. I'm driving. I got to do a Zoom meeting. I'm sitting in an empty parking lot in Vegas doing off of a cell network a video Zoom because my iPad, you know, Apple is just squeezing every drop out of this thing, you know, and, and that's because they force Zoom to do that. I know that because I had talked to the folks at Zoom and I said, how come Zoom works like this on iPad? It doesn't work like this on my PC. And they're like, the guy just kind of said, Apple. Yeah, because Apple just pounded them into submission. So if you're ever out there, you can do a lot of things off of a tablet that you may not be able to do even on a great desktop, which is kind of fascinating. But so that's a tool, but you need to learn the technique because without it, it's just like any other tool. See, if I, if I hand somebody a chainsaw and I say, look, here's a chainsaw, you can go cut down all these trees. You can go do all this other stuff. You know, there, there's a, there's, you know, I grew up in Colorado, so there was like a lot of logging and mining and stuff. Here, you, 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 and, and of course, you may know this one already, Jay, but you know, the, 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 the logger comes into town and uh, he goes into the supply store and the salesman says, hey, have you seen this new chainsaw? It's great. You're going to cut down twice as many trees with half the effort. And the guy goes, really? He goes, yeah, it's going to cost you this much and it's so much better than a saw and an axe. Guy says, wow, I'm going to do it and spend, you know, takes out the money, takes the rubber band off of the money and pays it. Comes back two weeks later, man, this guy is just looking haggard. And he goes, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm working twice as hard and I'm cutting half as much lumber. And the guy says, well, hang on, let me see, let, you know, what do you, you know, let me look at the chainsaw. The guy says, well, here it is. And the chainsaw salesman picks it up, you know, flips the switch, pulls the cord and goes, boom, 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 boom. And the, and the logger goes, hey, what's that? Yeah, that's called that's called learning how to use the technique of the tool. How do we turn the damn thing on? You know, how do we get it turned on? How do we make it work and do what we need it to do, especially today? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the thing. I think people jump into this thing and, and I think they should. Listen, I, I sometimes you have to just go without a net. We're in sometimes oh. for all of us. We just have to go without a net. And I get that. But it really is, and I think this is the beauty about your book, it really is incumbent, and, and this is why I tell people I really recommend this book to people, because you have really given the, even down to the basic nuts and bolts of how to get on this thing. Right. And is what you've done. But then, you know, you, we'll talk about, we're going to take this a little step further, but you've, you've, you're, you and your team, I mean, have outlined this thing where it's like, okay, if you don't know what to do, he he's going to teach you what to do in this book by the way it's like 81 pages or it's less than 100 pages long yep. it's, abs it's absolutely fabulous by the way let me also just say this about this book if you are one of those kindle unlimited people guess what the book's free you just you can just get kindle unlimited i mean this book is that helpful folks D do not pass it up because it's it's absolutely fabulous uh and it's available everywhere but it's, it's really just a great book. And I found it even for myself. And I use this technology. 
I, I found some little things that I was like, wow, that's, you know what, that's a great idea. You know what, I've never thought about that. And so I really, really hope people will get out and get the book because it's going to help you with your meetings. So one of the things, chapter one, uh, getting connected, technology giveth and technology taketh away. I love that title, by the way, great title for chapter one. Um, so one of the things people are going to want to know is, okay, this connecting thing, right? What are, right. Some, what are some of the things that are absolutely necessary if I'm going to have, if I'm going to be really reliable, if I'm going to be able to be really stable, what should, what should be some of the things that people need to know when it comes to doing Zoom? Well, one of the most important things is to know how big your pipe is. And when, when, whenever I hear somebody say, well, you know, there's high speed internet, well, high speed doesn't mean anything. So we, we actually talk about how to go out and do a speed test, know what your connection is, uh, make sure if you don't have a lot of bandwidth that you, you know, turn off the, you know, the, the, the kids downloading something or, or watching, you know, uh, some, something off of Netflix or YouTube. Uh, and then you have to understand that it's not only download speeds, but it's upload because especially when you're, when you're going both ways. I, I also recommend if any, anytime you're having difficulty, I just, uh, and this is a little tidbit that it didn't make it in the book, but if you're having difficulty, turn off your video feed and, and you will, you will just your video feed and you will notice a significant change. Mm. Uh, and, and that, that has happened. Uh, I mean, and, and so, so, so that's the first thing is we need to figure that out. And in fact, I mean, here, here was like the very first story testimonial we got you. you I think you're going to love this one. This woman wrote to us, wrote to us, you know, in an email and said, you know, here's what happened. Uh, you know, Corona has happened. I can't see my friends. Uh, it's really difficult. And your book allowed me to figure out and use Zoom for the first time and connect with my friends and actually explain to them how they needed to do this. And now we're getting together. Mm. And it was and I'll just I'll just say it, it was Mary. And she said, and oh, by the way, I'm 81 years old. Wow. So if Mary can figure this out, and, and, and part of it's because she had the book and she read it and she said, you know, a lot of this didn't apply to me, but getting connected got, got right there. And she did. She told her friends, hey, you know, she's doing things that most people never figure out, which is how to speed test. The guys at Zoom don't tell you that because, of course, the guys at Zoom are just saying it's going to work. Also, you have to watch how many resources, if you've got lots of things open, close a bunch of things down, you know, you know, if you don't have that super fast machine, because what you're doing is you're, you're building, think of it this way. This is the exciting part. This is the part that, that if we look at it as a positive, all of us are learning how to build a video studio in our house or wherever we're at. If it's even sitting in a parking lot in Vegas, you've got your own video studio that you're carrying with you. And that means anything that you're going to do on, in, in this life is you've got a video studio with you. And now you learn how to use it. And I'm going to say there's going to be a separation from those who master the capabilities of this kind of interaction versus other people who are not going to get it. It's going to be a big difference. So when you talk about that learning aspect that you were, you were going through, that's a big key. His name is John Pullman Docha, and the book is entitled Remote Work for a Better World, and you're listening to him here on A New Direction. Hey, folks, we got a couple of great sponsors here for The New Direction, and, and, and we just love them. Epic Physical Therapy, my physical therapist, I love them. I've been going to them for years, and whether you're recovering from an injury or a surgery, whether you're suffering from everyday aches and pains, whether you're having difficulty performing activities of daily living, maybe you're a professional athlete. Guess what? They work with them all. And you know, here's the thing. The elite team at Epic Physical Therapy will provide you with a customized treatment plan that is tailored to you. That's right. With their experience in rehabbing young athletes to elite professionals, they really do understand why it's so important to treat the entire body as a functional whole, not just your symptoms or your injury. So when you're ready for epic relief, epic recovery, and epic results, don't look any further. Go to Epic Physical Therapy. That's epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors. You know what? 
they help people all over the world for 35 years. They have been at the top of the real estate game. And you know why they help people all over the world? It's because they're independently owned and operated and they do not belong to a national company. They are just one company that has created one relationship at a time over the course of 35 years all over the world. So they have access to the very best experts when it comes to real estate. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you're looking to start whether it is to buy a home, whether it is to sell your home, I recommend that you start with the people who really are the memory makers, the people who are the relationship creators, the people who for 35 years have stayed at the top of the game. I would start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors. And you can learn more by going to lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on A New Direction with John Paul Mendocha and his book entitled Remote Work for a Better World. Uh, and we're just getting, we really just got started in that first segment, but we are going to move on pretty rapidly. I, I love your story. Um, you know, I think that, that, I think what happens is, and you make, you make mention of this in the book, that sometimes we get caught up into Zoom as being, you know, only for business and for business purposes and business meetings. But the truth of the matter is it can be so much more than that. And it should be. I mean, it is a way, uh, you know, the, the term that we are throwing out is really a bad term. We're really not social distancing. We're physically distancing because we can remain social. And, you know, the psychological literature has been so clear that, you know, we can create close ties, even in the social media realms, even in, with Zoom, we can still create close ties. And so the idea that we're social distancing is really a misnomer. The truth is we're physically distancing. We can remain social. And I think Zoom is playing a huge role, as you just shared with your story, of being able to remain socially close. Um, you know, there's nothing that I can imagine if I was 81 years old, I can't imagine, you know, just being able to see your friends at a time like this. I think that's, that would be so powerful. And you say, there's one quote that you say, you know what, we have to take care of each other. And I think that's, that's part of what's going on with Zoom. I think it's, it's, it's just the possibilities uh, that we, we can do that. I'm going to jump to uh, chapter three, the road to successful Zoom meetings. And and one of the things that you, you say, you point out right away, it must be repeatable and reliable. And the goal is simple. Make it as seamless as possible for uh, you to get spectacular results. And we've talked about the equipment, right? But this idea of same place, different place meetings, all right, where, because it's the space-time continuum, same time, different place meetings, there's a lot that we should consider. Give us a few things that you think we should consider before we do this uh, same time, different place meetings. Well, you, you, the first thing you want to do is you want to think about, all right, we're, we're going to have four or five people get together. We have to think about what time zones are going to work, what, you know, what, what's going to happen. I mean, I, I do these every week. I have a, I have a program that I do every week. Uh, and I have, you know, multiple continents, uh, lots of time zones. So you've got to think about how everybody fits in. Um, I also want you, know, you, you need to be able to be organized. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happens in a, in a physical meeting, I mean, business meeting, but really in, a, in any kind of setting is that there's a certain amount of, even if there's, there's catch to it. Well, when you're doing a Zoom meeting, you know, you, you have a definitive start time. People have to physically do something to get there. So if you're going to be the person organizing the meeting, be that person who helps organize some things. Give some people a sense of what's going to happen and what's going to take place. Don't just have this thing just go plop and, you know, OK, we're just going to kind of ramble through this. And then people are going, oh, man, how long is this going to take? I mean, is, you know, I mean, is this really what purgatory is like? And, you know, on and on, you know, so, you know, make sure that you got this figured out ahead of time. And then also. Tell people right up front what, what you're what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it. Um, you know, teach people where the mute button is so they don't have like background noise. I mean, you know, and 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 those types of things. Give them permission if there if there's going to be disturbances. You know, they've got kids, they've got they've got cats, they've got dogs, they've got an iguana. I don't know, but give them permission that something's going to happen. It's going to be okay. You know, I mean. Uh, you know, and, and then the other part is to tell, 
tell them that, you know, if you are going to close the door in your house, maybe you want to like take this thing called paper. I mean, I know it's, it's a, it's a breakthrough concept and say meeting in progress and put a piece of tape on the door or something. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea, right? Some of those things I think are little pieces that will make your life easier. No, I, I, I agree. Listen, I have a little, uh, cardboard sign that i had painted it says on air that is uh velcroed to the back of my door and it can flip either way you know yeah and i velcro it to the door so that everybody knows you know in the studio because the studio is here in my home that you know when that sign says on air guess what no (laughs) no you because sometimes you know a door being shut is not enough we sometimes even in your own home you have to send out these reminders uh for sure in chapter five entitled don't panic uh which by the way i i thought this was really really (laughs) really critical because people are panicking about having to do this right and you talk about the importance of mindset and delegating and putting in the work talk about don't panic, the importance of mindset, delegating and putting in the work. Talk about those four things. Well, the, the, the first part about not panicking is making sure that you convince everybody, and we talk about this, that they download whatever they have to download for Zoom, you know, do a little bit of a test meeting, do a little bit of those things. Un- understand that this thing can, can, can create a problem, right? I mean, what, what's the worst part about doing live broadcast is that it's live. <laughs> you never, you never know what's going to go on. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, I, I watch, you know, cable news and I watch where the feed drops out and I'm thinking these people are like, like operating on a level so much different than mine and they're having more technical glitches. And part of it is, is an expectation. So don't panic is, is I think all about being prepared and, and doing that ahead of time. Uh, and then the other part, is and and you you had a couple of other specifics so give me give me a couple more that you yeah, want me to the importance of that mindset that have, well, you talk about the importance of mindset in there which i thought was just critical yeah i i i, I always have you know my clients and the, and those people who work for me is, is take a three by five card out and and give yourself a little bit of a mnemonic you know mm-hmm. i mean i'm i'm and i know that these are these are expensive props so but you know what i mean but you know i mean you know you get a you know you, you get you get you get like a three by five card and you write on there it's gonna be okay or you know if if it all falls apart you know mm-hmm. we're going to reschedule uh, and and but but you know part of the mindset is that it's gonna be okay right and and, and I got this I, I used to have a radio show in in Phoenix and and the, you know when I first started the director and producer sat down and I had been doing lots of what we would now call podcasts but I've been doing a lot of that type of thing and. The guy said, look, this is live radio, so you're going to have to understand it's a little bit different. He goes, first off, you, you got to know that the clock, the clock is serious. When we get to that close and you start to hear the bumper music, man, you know, we don't care how brilliant you are because it's going. It's gone. Right. And he said, the other thing is, is that is that you need to know that when you're on, you're, you're going to have to keep going because if you gap out, if you do a three-second pause right. on a radio show – Guess what? People are like going, did the thing break? What's going on? Did the guy die? Oh, he died. Go to the next channel. <laughs> now, I learned, I, I try to give that to people in, in uh, doing Zoom. I mean, you are, you are a broadcaster, which, by the way, scares people, but it's pretty simple. All it means is that you are in control. You've got to do this and have fun with it, you know? Yeah. yeah I- Enjoy it. Yeah, I think I think people are intimidated, and I, this is why I love the importance of mindset that you gave. The, people can be so easily intimidated by this technology, and, and we're going to talk about the monkey slap because it's so, it's so <laughs> funny. But the, the the truth is, we can be very intimidated about it if we're well prepared. But then if you you know the truth is about going live. The biggest problem, and you brought it up, is you're live. That's the problem about me being live right now on Castbox FM or Facebook Live. You know, as we're doing this right now, right? I know that anything can happen, and you you have to just have the mindset that says, okay, so what? If it happens, it happens, right? And and that it's okay. Uh, I am not any less of a human being. I am not going to be embarrassed by that. I'm now I do have backups. Now what people don't see 
you know, and what you don't see is right. I've got, you know, two laptops, a soundboard and a big giant monitor in front of me as well as the camera. And so the possibility for technology to go wrong has just multiplied. <laughs> so you, well, you do have to have a mindset that says, okay, well, what's the worst that happens and then go and it's okay. Well, and, and I'll and I'll give I'll give everybody a phrase. If you know what Murphy's law is, which is anything that can go wrong will, and at the worst possible time, is just and and that's too long. So what you write on your three by five card is Murphy rides for free. <laughs> and since Murphy rides for free, Murphy is out there every second of every day. So you're sitting there saying, "Hey, I got my setup. I got this." You know, Jay just elicited Murphy and, you know, there's a lightning thunderbolt coming from some other galaxy aiming right at his whatever. And, you know, Murphy rides for free. And it, as long as you're OK with that, then you can overcome it. You won't you won't be embarrassed. You don't have that sense of what's going on. You know, I, I, w I was traveling to a speaking gig one time and my luggage didn't show up. So, you know, I'm in very casual looking clothes and I guess I could have stopped off at the Walmart or something. And I went on stage with, you know, well, I actually cleaned up, but I went up on stage and I said, well, first thing I'm going to tell you is about resiliency and why if your luggage doesn't show up, your life isn't over. Yeah. Now, I've seen people who resiliency is they ran out of scones at Starbucks and they had a meltdown in DFW and, you know, security had to be called. They had to be, you know, rhino trank gun and, yeah. and, and moved out in that, you know, silence of the lambs, you know, uh, oh, hand truck. I mean, you know, so you got to keep things in perspective. Murphy always rides for free. So if you do that, that's a good mindset to have. And I think it's the last part that you talk about in chapter five is, you know, put in the work because if you practice and you put in the work, it just makes your mindset much easier, you know, when things do go wrong. And I, I think that's, I think that's a critical part of what you say in chapter five is you got to practice. You, you have to practice with this. I mean, we, we just recently started doing zoom as part of the live broadcast and uh, I had been reluctant to do it, not because I was afraid of the technology. I just was just one more piece of technology. I just didn't want to, have to deal with. I'm going to be really honest. And, uh, but I kept getting, you know, authors and, and then, and then I was like, well, you know what, we just need to bite the bullet and do it. And then the more we've practiced it, the more we've done it. And by the way, we do practice it. I mean, I do practice this. I do a lot of simulations on my own to, you know, what if, what if, you know, author doesn't show up, can I go an hour? You know, so, I mean, you do need to put in the work. You need to practice with this material, which takes us to chapter six, which is take the training wheels off. <laughs> it's called the monkey slap. And, you know, I, I had never, I had never heard the monkey slap term, but being someone when I was in graduate school in psychology and I had to take a class uh, where we had to observe um, baboons in Spokane, Washington, while I was in grad school. And you, of course, hand a baboon, you know, an object. And if it's supposed to play something or music or whatever it is, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing what they do. But this is really true about much of our technology. Talk about the monkey slap, because I don't think the, for those folks who are older, I don't think they understand it. But I, I, once you gave me the analogy, I got it. Well, the monkey slap really came about because most people don't actually ever try to figure out how something works. So, and this, and the, and, and the monkey slap doesn't condone slapping primates, other primates. So what, <laughs> so what, so what the monkey slap is all about is that when a new piece of technology comes out and there's no type of documentation whatsoever. And, and by the way, this is the big fear, you know, give somebody a smartphone past a certain age and they won't even get the thing turned on. They won't even figure out how to do it. Right. Give this to a, I don't know, today, a seven-year-old, and they've got it turned on, and they're changing the settings, and they're doing all of these things. And that's because they perform what, what monkeys do, which is they just keep slapping it. They keep doing it until something happens. Right. And then they go, oh, okay, I, I, that happened. Now maybe I can do some more, and then, okay, this happens. Okay, and then I can go do some more, and then that happens. Right. And once you get to that, 
lack of, of fear and actually ego gets into it a lot, right? Because we want to know how, how to, how that, you know, it's almost like, I don't want to use something that's going to embarrass me. Well, all you have to do, and if, if you went and observed baboons, or if you go to the zoo and watch monkeys, uh, I can tell you nothing embarrasses these, these guys from what no, I no, can they tell. Don't. You know, they <laughs> are just they're, out there. Yeah, they're fleeing in all sorts of stuff, by the way, but without without any shame. Yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, and and so so what happens is that is that in some ways you got to understand that, that that we're 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 kind of showing you how to monkey slap it better, how to do it in a way that you're not going to get in trouble and, and you're going to see it. And, 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 you know, and frankly, the mistake that people will make is that they'll have a frustrating piece of technology and then they say, well, I, I'm going to give up. I mean, and, and one of the things that, that you talked about is, you know, commitment to learning is, is what I took from one of the things you yeah. said earlier. So it's a commitment to getting better. So let's get a little bit better and let's get a little bit better. I mean, when I first started doing Zoom meetings, wow, you know, and, and, and this is after having done well over a thousand teleseminars. And now I have clients who say, let's get, let's get a video. Well, that just multiplied my problem. Well, now we have millions of people, maybe over a billion people who've never done this before. And then we set them down in front of it and go, okay, may have this work. So make a commitment to getting a little bit better, learning how to make this stuff work, and then not being so ego driven that your fear is that, oh, my goodness, if I get it wrong, wow, what's going to happen? And that, that means if you've got to talk to a really important customer or if you're going to go and do a, uh, you know, an interview, make sure that you know what's going to happen. I mean, my, my favorite, favorite one that the people do all the time, which is like I, I was sitting there talking to a brand new coaching client. And behind him was a door that was open. Okay, that's fine. But in that door, it turns out that was a bathroom. Okay, everybody knows what a bathroom is. But behind that, the toilet lid was up. And okay, but then the way the camera was is that we could almost see, well, I mean, we, we, we're going too far. We're back with the monkeys at the zoo. Right, yeah. Know your backdrop. And in fact, we, I recommend that people, if you can afford it, do a, do like a green screen. There's a great portable green yeah. screen for less than 200 bucks from Elgato. No, they don't send me any money, doggone it. But I'm just going to tell you, I do that. That's what I have, because the last thing I want you to do is to see what's behind it. People in the entertainment business that I know explain to me, John, we only fix the set based upon what the camera sees. Right. And Guarantee you, you don't want to see what's to the left to, nope. or the right. <laughs> it get pretty crazy. Yeah, absolutely true. His, it, you're right. His name is John Paul Mendoza, and his book is called Remote Work for a Better World. And you're listening to him here on A New Direction. Hey, folks, listen, uh, Epic Physical Therapy. I talk about them all the time, and there's a reason why. They offer the most advanced top-of-the-line equipment. They really do. Things like the Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill, the Normatec compression sleeves, the Game Ready, which you've heard me rave about, the ice cold water that combines compression to take the swelling out of your joints or whatever part of body you have. That's just a few of them, right? Look, they're also trained and certified in the most comprehensive cutting edge treatments available. Things like blood flow restriction therapy, uh, dry needling, which by the way, uh, Wow. Talk about pain relief. And then cupping. If you've ever seen the circles on the back of a swimmer, it's where they're manipulating the muscle through the skin with a cup. Yeah. Like a suction cup, right? Man, they are awesome. Look, you, I know, right? You, you're ready for your epic relief. You're ready for your epic recovery. You're ready for epic results. You're ready for epic physical therapy. You can learn more by going to epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, right? I can tell you something. For 35 years, right? Even though they're located in the Research Triangle Park, you know what? You know what their customers and clients call them? They they call them the legends of customer service. Now, why would their clients over 35 years call them the legends of customer service? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they have built their business one relationship at a time. It's because they understand that while your home is probably the most expensive personal purchase you'll ever make in a lifetime, the truth is your home is also where some of the greatest memories you will ever have are made. And they understand that those memories are going to mean 
a lifetime to you. It's because, you know, think about it. You know, you go to, you remember going to your grandmother's house? Do you remember what she paid for it? But do you remember the memories in the house? Right? There's the value. And Linda understood that from day one, 35 years ago. And she continues to do that today where she understands that, you know what? Your memories are extraordinarily important. And that means your house is important. And that means your home is important. And she wants to get you the best value for your home. She wants you to find the best value for your home. So when you are ready to start with someone who is the memory maker, the one who is the relationship creator, then start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors. It's not changed in 35 years and it's not going to change anytime soon. You can learn more by going to lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on A New Direction. Uh, we're with John Paul Mendoza, his book, Remote Work for a Better World. Absolutely fabulous. And we have been just kind of going through some of the things that you should think about when it comes to, uh, you know, doing Zoom and working remotely, because that's the world that we're currently living in today. And it's probably going to be the world that we're going to be living in for not just a, a, a short period of time, but because we're starting to understand that, you know what, we can get a lot of work done remotely. In, very, in a lot of industries, we need to grasp a hold of this concept of being able to do a Zoom meeting and do it right, all right? And so we're, we're going to talk about some of these little pieces here as we finish up here in this hour. So let's talk about a couple of really, we, you talked about the green screen, but I think one of the things that, two things that we need to talk about is audio and video. And you bring up two really fabulous points, and I am right on it. And let's, let's talk about the video portion first. What should we know about video? Because we can make some mistakes there. Well, I, I think the, the first mistake that we make is that, is that when we get into the whole realm of video, we, we immediately go, Hey, high def, right? I want high def. Right. And all that sounds good because of course we're watching high definition television. And by the way, watching something happen, is infinitely more uh, is easier and simpler than you actually making it happen. Right. So, you know, you want to look at your resolution and see if you can actually tone down your resolution because uh, they're probably not going to want to see you in 4k or whatever that might be. <laughs> and, and by the way, very few people have the bandwidth to do 4k. Right. So, so, so video is important and, and you want to make sure that you understand how your video works, how, how it's going to be put together and, and you can you can start out inexpensively and you can go very expensively. Uh, you can actually get a really decent Zoom call out of a iPhone or an Android with, with a face with a front facing camera. But what you want to do is you want to get a stand and have that stand hold it instead of you because because right. let, let's face it if, if you're holding your camera, you know if you're holding it like this way, you know and you've got this little jitter because you will because your hand will get tired and you're doing this stuff. Uh, you know, you're not going to be, you're not going to be very effective. So just make sure that you understand that and, and, you know, test it, see what it's like. Also, you can make videos on your, on your PC, your Mac, you know, on your laptop, make some videos and see what the camera looks like. Big mistake that people make is they got nostril cam going and that's great <laughs> for those people. You know, which one I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, Looks like, looks like, you know, Sherwood Forest up there. But, you know, you got these guys who they don't even, they're clueless. You know, right. by the way, if you want to know how to make your laptop go up, 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 uh, I will give you the cheap way to do it. You could go get some paper that would go into your printer and just keep stacking up, keep stacking up reams of paper until you have the right line of sight. So people aren't looking up there and going, Huh, I wonder. Don't want them to wonder. Okay. How's how's that for a really inexpensive way to do that? It, and, it, you, you're right. You know, you can take books or whatever to raise your laptop if you don't have a separate camera. I I think probably you and I I have a camera on a tripod that's a USB camera attached here yeah. so that I'm looking right at it. But you don't have to have uh, that you don't have to spend that money to do that type of thing. So, you know, you, you most, as you point out in the book, you know, most of your laptops don't have, have a camera in there, but, but let's get rid of nose cam. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's get some books and let's get that, let's get that raised up there so we can see you. Right. 
let's talk about audio. <laughs> let's talk about audio because I think we, we, we think that because we're on video, that audio is not important, but it really is critical, isn't it? Audio is very important. Now, I, I happen to prefer, just because of my personal style and what I do, is I wear, I wear a gaming headset. So you can go buy a gaming headset for 70 bucks. It'll plug into the USB, and it does a good job. It, it, you know, it sounds good. By the way, it kills lots of surrounding noise, and, and that makes me the mic stand. You know, so no matter how much I'm moving my head, you know, it's funny because when, I, when I'm buying, looking into buying headsets, I was talking to a, somebody who's really a good audio engineer, and, and we were talking about my problem, which is I had a really nice microphone like, like Jay has. In fact, I have several. But the problem is I would come off center, so my volume would keep getting funky and changed. And he said, well, you know, tell me how much you move your head. And I said, well, it's kind of like halfway between Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder. <laughs> and uh, he said, OK, here's the solution. The solution is you have to be the mic stand. So I bought I actually have multiple headsets. But for for 70 bucks at a Best Buy, you can buy them cheaper. But, you know, you now have this and it's great isolation. People are all, I, I watch a lot of, of people who take, you know, the, the little headset that comes with their phone. And they have that. They're holding the microphone up to them. And let's face it, a microphone that's the size of a pinhole, that's, that's what your voice is being replicated through. Right. So you spend a few bucks, you'll get a, it'll, it'll be a lot better. Some people don't like to wear these because it makes them look, you know, I don't know, whatever. But, you know, you, you got to think in terms of a good microphone. And you can get pretty decent microphones for, you know, less than a hundred bucks. Absolutely. I, I tell that to even, you know, people who are interested in the podcasting industry, you know, I, I tell them, look, you know what, you can, there's a lot of great microphones that you can get for under hundred dollars. I mean, great sounding microphones. And if you are someone who's being interviewed or doing interviews and you're going to do zoom interviews, your solution is really, it's a great solution. There are, but there are a lot of choices out there. I mean, uh, I happen to, you know, this is the studio and it's, I happen to like how this microphone sets up and does what it does, but oh, that, yeah. it's because it's uncomfortable here, but that's not everybody. So I think, you know, one of the things that people need to pull is you got to find out what works for you. And there's a lot within your budget that you don't even realize that is available to you. If you're budget conscious, that can make you sound great. But audio is so important because the last thing that I want people to sound like, you know, is you don't want to sound like you're on my old AM transistor radio from 1978. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, I just don't want, you know, you don't want that sound. So you want to, you want to really, the quality of audio has a lot to do with how well people can listen and how long they can listen. And we understand that lighting is real important too, isn't it, John? Light, lighting is very important. Lighting is very hard to do. And, and I can tell you, I've struggled with it. And I, I actually found, and, and I know that we're, you know, we're on, we're on radio. So, I was like, you know, but, but you know, I, I actually found uh, some LED lights from Costco, which let me, uh, you know, do directional lighting. And they were, you know, they were 25 bucks a piece. Now, right. you know, you know, you, you obviously have studio lights. Uh, I would recommend to anybody you know, well, here, here's going to be the big shift. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to jump to a different spot for a That's second, fine. right? Cause I know That's you're a Trekkie guy. So, uh, you know, we, we had beamed to that other planet and, and what we're going to see is that when people design houses in the future or design rooms, they're going to design a studio where you're going to work because if they design a studio where you're going to work, you're going to put all these things in place today. We're going to have to make it up ad hoc. So you have to kind of learn how to make this stuff work where you're at. So yeah, get extra lighting, see what you look like, see what those things are like and, and get it, get a sense of that. And by the way, you need a lot more light than you think you're going to need. And uh, you know, you'll, you'll, and, and this is again, where experiment with your technology without zoom. I mean, you can, you know, every single platform has a way to record yourself, record it, have a look at it, see how, how you look or you don't look. And then you go, okay, now what can I fix or change? Mm. Uh, his name's John Paul Mendoza. The book is entitled A Remote Work for a Better World. Uh, and uh, we're just working through some of, the, some of the technical aspects that you need to think about uh, when it comes to Zoom. But we're also talking about some of the practical aspects. And I want to talk about chapter eight because chapter eight is called Good Ceremony. And 
um, I'm going to let you roll here because uh, <laughs> you come right out of the box and say, a bad meeting is a bad meeting and Zoom doesn't make it any better. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so let's talk about the elements what what is good ceremony first of all and then let i want you to talk about some elements that we need the etiquette and protocols if you i'm going to let you fly on this one and and let you fly and tell me what are some of the some of the things that we need to take care of if we're going to have a really good meeting on zoom if you're going to have a really good meeting on zoom you you set a time and you let people come in just like they would in a, in a physical location. And they sit and they talk and they get to, you know, everybody, hey, you know, Sally and Bob and everything. And we go back and forth and we're, we're, doing, we're doing just fine, right? So we have that kind of, you know, casual period. And then when the meeting starts, you really want to tell everybody, now we're going to start the meeting. And then the, the point of a good ceremony is that you tell everybody the purpose. Why are we here this is what we're trying to accomplish. You explained that everybody is going to have time to, you know, a certain amount of time that they can spend, but you want to make sure that everybody knows why they're there and what the agenda is going to look like. Meetings have a tendency to be very amorphous. They, that means they flood everywhere. They go all over the place. And a good ceremony means that we are moving towards successful outcomes. We're having people feeling good about them attending the meeting. Not, hey, we're having a meeting to have a meeting to have a meeting because meetings need to have outcomes. We, and, and therefore, when we discuss things, we want to have people discuss them. See, there's lots of times that people want to just participate in the meeting because they say, I haven't said anything, so I need to say something. I'm going to just say a, another thing or something like that. And you want to make sure that, that, that when people participate, that they, they understand why they're saying what they're saying. Uh, I'm always very tempted to shut people down <laughs> when they're when they're just going into something that has nothing to do with what we were scheduled to do. So having an agenda is a great idea. Having what we're going to talk about, asking everybody to submit ahead of time if appropriate, or at least take the time to figure out what they're going to do ahead of time, and be prepared. Anytime, like, like I've had meetings where people were there and nobody was prepared. And what I said is, okay, time to reset. We got to reset. We're going to come back and do this another day, but don't go forward with the meeting if there isn't a purpose to do it. And then make sure that when we get to the end and we do a recap, this, is, this was our original purpose. This is what we've accomplished. Here are the action items. Here are deadlines and due dates. And here's what we're going to do next, because that way there's a certain closure to it and we now have had a complete meeting and a complete sense of having accomplished something and not having, like I've seen so many times where people would walk out in a corridor, today it's virtual, but walk out and go, wow, that was a total waste of time. Mm -hmm. you, what you want to do is have people walk out and say, I have clarity about why we did it and what we're going to accomplish. When people feel like they're accomplishing things, Jay, they are much more attentive and they like, they like doing this. And one of the biggest problems right now we have with, with Zoom is there's a lot of sloppy stuff. I, I, you know, it, it's, just, it's just amazing. Well, I, there's three things. There's, there's three things. There's, there's several things that you talk about here that you've, you've brought up. And there's a few more that I just want to hit on that you just so brilliantly uh, hit on. First of all, purpose. Make sure that your meeting starts with a purpose. Secondly, is it worth the effort? That is, is it worth, is it worth it for you to attend? You know, positive emotional energy. You talk about that. Do you feel better or worse after attending this meeting? And you make it a real point that you need to ask people at the end of these meetings, ask them, did this, did this meeting serve the purpose that we intended, that we stated that we were going to do? Ask them, was it worth the effort for you to attend this meeting? Ask them, how do you feel at the end of the meeting? I thought those were three brilliant questions. And the fact that you said, and I'm going to quote you, we need to be direct in asking these questions in remote meetings. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Jay. I appreciate that, you know, that, the, those kind words. To, to me, to me it's, it's all about, I mean, if you're going to have good meetings in person, you should have good meetings in Zoom. And yeah, I, I don't like to leave 
any meeting without saying, you know, did you learn something? Did we get to where we want to go? And, and are, you know, are we going to actually go out and do something? You know, the worst thing that happens is that we get to the end and it just kind of goes blah and nothing happens. We, we need action. And if you don't have action, and, and this, I believe, is one of the biggest reasons why we end up with, uh, you know, cirrhosis of the, uh, uh, of the organization is that, you know, stuff doesn't happen. You know, I mean, the, the system clogs up. Not good. Right. Do you realize we've been on an hour? I do not. I, 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 I just, you know, it's fun talking to you. It's, this I, has I been enjoy a blast. It. I've had a blast with you for an hour. I really, really have. Um, so how, so the show's called a new direction, right? And it, we go around the world. We ask people to, we have them tune in the show because we try to help them find a new direction in their life, their career, the business, whether it's success or leadership, some somewhere in their life. And I believe that you've done that today in your book, Remote Work for a Better World. If you could leave listeners with a new direction, what would John Paul Mendoza say? What I would say is, is I hope that everyone takes this time, whatever time it is in your life, and doesn't look at it and say, look, this virus, this situation has shut down my life and says, okay, I have a reset. The whole world is having a reset. What do I want to do if I could do it? And now how do I map out what I want to do going forward? So many people were stuck before. And what they're looking for is a way to get back to being stuck again. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion is, is that you take a chance and look at it and say, maybe I have a clear break. It's going to be scary. It's not going to be easy. But maybe I want to go out and do something brand new or do something I've always wanted to do but never had the courage to do it muster up the courage, go do it. You're never too young. You're never too old. You're never too poor. You're never too rich. What you want to do is what you lack usually is the confidence and courage to go out there and say, I'm worth it. And I can deserve to do this and I can go do it no matter what. And I think if you do that, that's, I think matches up to what you're talking about, Jay, which is that's the new direction that you should think about. That's awesome. How do people get a hold of you? Well, they can go to a website called positiontowinbook.com, positiontowinbook.com. They'll find the, the first book, but they also find the second book, which is uh, you know, Remote Work for a Better World, which we've been talking about. Um, and they, they can get a hold of me that way. They can find out where, what, we're all, what I'm all about, do a variety of different things. Uh, I would like to, to, to leave everybody with a really simple statement, which is, you know what? If, if you want to make it a better world, what you do is you add something to the world and not subtract. Mm. I see a lot of subtraction out there. And all I can say is, what is that thing you can add? Whatever little thing that could be. And uh, I just reminded of, of something that you know I try to do on a regular basis, which is how do you help somebody without ever expecting to get any return? Because if you do that, you've added to them and help them and you've helped yourself. Quick story. I know we're running tight on time. But I'm flying from Ottawa, Canada to Las Vegas. I'm stopping off in Chicago. I got to change planes. It's been a rough couple of weeks to get this gig done. And I'm eating breakfast. And I notice a couple tables over, there's a soldier. Could tell he's a soldier. And he looks dog tired. Makes me feel bad that I even think I'm tired. And I say to the waitress, uh, the server, I said, uh, you know, what, what's he having? She goes, oh, you know, standard breakfast. You know, I hand her 25 bucks. I said, does that cover it plus a good tip? And she said, absolutely. I said, okay. I walk out. She had asked me, well, should I tell the guy? No, don't worry about it. I'm walking down the concourse. I hear this, you know, heavy footsteps coming up behind me. Chunk, 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 chunk. Guy walks up. He's almost speechless. And he said, why did you do it? And I said, I wanted to say thank you for your service. I said, why didn't you want me to know? And I said, Because thanking you is all about what I get to do. It helped me. It helped you. I said, you going home? He said, yeah, coming home from Afghanistan. I said, well, hopefully this helped make your day a little bit better. Add something positive every day to this world. I love it. I love it. His name is John Paul Mendoza. The book is called Remote Work for a Better World. And he's trying to make it a better world. You know what I say to you every week? And that's this, right? Be inspired. Because when you're inspired, that means you can inspire others. And when they're inspired, that means they in turn will inspire other people as well. And that can make this world a great place. 
I'm going to be back next week with another great guest, another great book. It's going to be another great show. And as I say to you every week, ciao, everybody. To go a different way, yeah. The time has come for a new direction. your confidence and the answers don't make sense you got to keep your hope alive you got to know you can survive this is your time to find a new direction a brand new day a new direction things are gonna change Dreams will take you places you have never been before. Find your passion, find your strength.